The super yacht in front of us is a 98-foot Westport, first delivered in 1998. It's had a refit in 2021, and one of my favorite things to do is tour these old, I shouldn't say it's not that old, but these older raised pilot house super yachts. I love seeing how the owners have refit them over the years. This one sleeps seven in three different staterooms, and it also has room for three or four crew. You have a water maker on board, and this one also has brand new engines with the warranties, so I think you're all gonna really enjoy that. This yacht is listed for sale by Worth Avenue Yachts. Like I said, the length is 98 feet, the beam is 24 feet, and it has a five foot, nine inch draft. Let's go ahead and begin the super yacht tour by stepping onto the fixed slum platform. And then you have a cockpit area back here. This is obviously great for fishing or just hanging out. And then this door in the transom leads to the engine rooms, but we'll check that out later on in the tour. You can step up into the aft deck from either side. And the first thing you'll see is this refrigerator over here, the stairs to the flybridge, and this beautiful high gloss table with the chairs and the bench that wraps around. On the far side, you have a little bar area with a sink and some storage. Let's check if there's anything under here. I think it, that one's just storage. And the same for this one. But like I said, you do have the refrigerator on the opposite side. So let's head inside. And I must say, I am liking what I am seeing. You have this huge L-shaped sofa on the port side. And this is a really funky but really cool bar area. It actually has a step down. And then you have your fridge, ice maker, and sink back here. And I'll let you pause after this focuses, but here is some of the upgrades and features on this yacht. So if you're interested, you can pause there and take a look at that. But if we move forward, you actually just have this open area. But of course, if you wanted to change this into a formal dining area, you certainly could do so. You can see there is the light overhead and you could definitely fit a dining table right in here if you so desired. If we continue forward, you see a side access door right here the raised pilot house is right up here. We'll get to that in a bit. Here we have the day head. And now we're gonna step into the massive country kitchen. You can see this extremely large fridge and freezer You have your Viking appliances, all really high-end stuff, and then a large sink over there, and your dishwasher and trash compactor. And then to go along with this country kitchen, you have some seats right here for the bar, as well as a wraparound seating area. And then forward, if you wanted to, you could use these as additional guest cabins, but I think they are intended as the crew area. If we step all the way forward, we have these two single beds. And there is an ensuite right here. But it's also for the cabin right there. You have it's actually neatly hidden away, but you have your full-size washer and dryer. And then the shower it must be behind this door hiding away. There it is. So it's a decent size ensuite and head for the crew. And here is presumably the captain's cabin. So before we head up to the race pilot house, we are gonna head down to the guest cabins. Excuse me. So 
Everyone in our family has a couple of these in the house. Okay. So we can wrap around here. And down here is where you find the three official staterooms. We'll start forward with what would be considered the VIP cabin. It's a very comfortable room. Very bright, very clean. And this has a Pullman berth. So you can sleep an extra body here. And then if we turn around, you'll see the closet and the ensuite. And then opposite of that, you have the third cabin, two single beds, but they're pretty wide single beds if we're being honest. And then their ensuite is right over here. Very similar to before. And I'll open up the closet for you all. And then if we move forward, we will find the owner's cabin. So here you can see your king bed. I really like the color combinations they did in here. You have a dresser built in on the side over here, as well as the TV up on the wall. And then let's see what's in here. It looks like you have a double-sided ensuite. I'm definitely surprised by that. You have your jetted tub in the middle, which is also the shower. And then on the far side, we'll step in there in a moment, but you have the opposite side of the ensuite. So like I said, I definitely wasn't expecting that. You have a little set tee over here. And then a really good size walk-in closet, all cedar lined. And then here just is that other side of the ensuite. Exactly the same as before. So like I said, I always have a lot of fun seeing how these older raised pilot house yachts are redone over the years. So I wanna know how you would refit a yacht like this. If you had say a 1999 to 2003 raised pilot house yacht, what type of color scheme would you go for? All right, so now we're stepping up into the raised pilot house. I got cut off there for a second, but I wanna know how you would refit a yacht like this, what type of color scheme, what type of design and like look would you go for? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'm definitely interested in hearing your thoughts and ideas. But you have a really plush couch behind the helm chair. And then you have your camera system. And then all of the other controls of the yacht. So now you can easily access your flybridge from the pilot house. But you'll see that you have three different stid helm chairs along with the controls in the middle. And then you do have little wing stations on each side to ease in the docking of this vessel. And then if we move back on the flybridge, you are covered by a hardtop right in this section. And then you have another high gloss table with the L-shaped seating that wraps around. You have a bar over here. You can see all the bar stools. And then you have your sink over here. And then continuing back, right now you can see all of these loungers out. but you also have the crane built in. So this is also where you could store jet skis and a tender as well. And here it's covered, but you do have a grill that's mounted right here as well. Let me know what you would do with this space. Would you leave it for the loungers? Would you tow your tender? Would you prefer to be able to store your tender? I'm always interested to hear what you guys have to say. And then here you can see those stairs that lead us back down 
to the aft deck, and we're going to take those. I like how the tables match between the flybridge and the aft deck. And it looks like you forego the side deck on this side. So that increases the livable space inside. Obviously, if you need to get out there, you can. But actually, it's cut away on this side as well. So there is a handle there so the crew can easily get up and down for cleaning purposes. But we're going to have to go outside one of the forward doors to get up to the foredeck. I personally think I would go for a dining room, but I am liking how everything is back here in the main salon. Excuse me. All right, so we stepped outside the side access door and here there is a boarding gate right here. So if you're docked up on the side, you can easily step on and inside the yacht. Whew, this Florida sun is pretty relentless, but I will happily sweat for your entertainment. And you have this little seating area right here. You can see you have a bosun's closet in here and there are a few steps up and you can throw some extra sun pads on top if you want to lie out in the sun up here. Very traditional, as you normally expect on a raised pilot house like this. These yachts are a lot of fun, and these yachts make fantastic family cruisers as well as fantastic charter yachts. You have to let me know how you would use a yacht like this, but this would definitely make for a great family cruiser or a charter yacht, like I said. Honestly, you have so many different great options on a yacht like this that's been refit. And I think the last place we need to go to is the engine room. Whew. So we'll head down these stairs. And we will head inside. You have an engineering space right over here with a little sink. You also have a full-size washer dryer, so that's great to see. And then on this side, you have a really large refrigerator, so you have extra provision space. And forward is the engine room. And they have this rubber matting on the floor, so it's very comfortable to walk in here barefoot. Honestly, this engine room is extremely clean, but I guess that makes sense because, like I said in the beginning, these are brand new. MTU engines. So it makes sense that this engine room has been cleaned thoroughly. You have your generators on each side. And let me show you a little bit about these engines. There's some warranty information. So your top speed with these MTU engines is about 20 knots. You can cruise at 15 to 17 knots and they don't have a reported range. If I had to estimate, uh, it's tough. I would say maybe around seven to 900 nautical miles. I think you could definitely get over a thousand if you're going slower. Honestly, this might have a couple thousand mile range. I'm not honestly sure. I'll try to do some research, but I do think this yacht would be primarily used for charter. I don't think you'd always be pushing this yacht to its max range, but obviously you'd want to sort that out during your survey if you were looking to use this privately and travel a great distance. Either way, brand new engines, that's a huge cost that you're not gonna have to worry about. And I think we're gonna finish this tour in the main salon. Let's get out of the heat for a second. Thank you so much to Worth Avenue Yachts for granting me access on board. This is a great listing. It's a great boat. You have so much to like on this one. A lot of things have been redone, obviously the engines, but a bunch of other things have been replaced as well. Let me know what you think of this raised pilot house in the comment section down below, and we will catch you next time.